don't let anybody tell you that's okay because it's not. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain it this way. Everybody may be familiar with something like a, uh, a knitted or crocheted, uh, you know, blanket. If you stretch that thing apart, you can look right through it. So your scar capsule is like that. It's not waterproof. It's not fireproof. The implant, if it's ruptured, the gel that's ruptured is going to interact with your tissues. And don't let anybody try to lead you down the road that it can't. That interaction is not normal, and it leads mm -hmm. to more inflammation. Now, if there's an infection in there or a low-grade contaminant like I've described, that can interact with the, your tissues and specifically a fatty acid called oleic acid in your tissue, your breast tissue. That produces something called uh, a molecule called oxylipin tenho. And recently a paper has shown that this molecule is increased in patients who are suffering with more fatigue symptoms from breast implant illness or associated with breast implant illness. They've also been able to reproduce it in an animal model and produce fatigue in the animals. So I, I think like we need to move beyond like this is not a problem or this is 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 not got scientific you know, data to it. I've published a huge series, the largest in the world with PCR testing showing the incidents. And then this scientist who's out of Indiana University Medical Center, he showed that this molecule is ramped up in patients who are more symptomatic with fatigue. And he's shown it in an animal model. And he's shown there's other molecules like it. So hmm. is this really that complicated anymore? Are we making this like, is this still a thing that I have to defend all the time? It shouldn't be. You'd mentioned the capsule. And um, just as another sort of point of reference for people listening, one thing that happened to me was that they were fine for a couple of years and then one got hard. And then I thought, oh, maybe I hit a wall. So I had to check to see if it was ruptured. It was fine. Time had just passed. And I thought, oh, I'll get them out or I'll replace them or I'll replace one. I don't know. And then the other one got hard. And that was after I was done racing completely. So I was like, oh, that's weird. So what does that mean when an implant gets, uh, starts, forms continuously more scar tissue? Yeah, it can, it can vary depending on what the quality of the scar is like. And so I think of it, you know, just like pages of a magazine, you know, a super thin one is like one page or two pages thick, but as you're describing it, it's getting thicker and thicker and yeah. thicker. So I think of it as one, 